Welcome once again to Breakfast Central. Now, the team of people alleged to have helped convicted murderer and rapist Thabo Besta fake his death and escape from prison in South Africa more than a year ago have finally appeared in court. Besta's uh, lover, Dr. Napin Nadimfa Magundi Muna, or Mana, I beg your pardon, her father, um, as uh, well, Zolile Sikilini, as well as security company employee and a camera installer, came before the Bloemfontein High Court yesterday morning. Bessa is also charged in the case and appeared in the dock alone on Friday. He'll return to court on the 16th of May. Now, in their brief appearance, the 65-year-old Sikilini was granted a 10,000 rand bail. The magistrate agreed to postpone the case to the 3rd of May when all the three accused will return to court. The case has, been, case has been set down for two days. Now, joining us to give us more information is journalist and editor Diane Hawker. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Uh, so much is happening with this case. It's a really shocking revelation, one of the most shocking crime stories to break the internet in recent times. Dr. Nandipa Magudumana appeared alongside her father. Now, the NPA has announced that there would be change to his charges. So can you give us insight into what charges he's currently facing and maybe what changes we're expected to see? Um, absolutely. I think everyone in South Africa and per perhaps across the continent is following the story with keen interest because of the details um, involved in it. Uh, Dr. Nandi Mamakudumana's father, Zolile Sikileni, was initially charged with murder. However, the NPA has said that they've now received additional information during the course of of their investigation and they're no longer going to be charging him with murder however he is still charged with some of the other charges which is aiding and abetting a convict is in his escape defeating the ends of justice and fraud what we know about uh, the Tabo Besta case so far is that a body was moved into the prison and replaced um, uh, what was thought to be Tabo Besta's body um, so the murder charge related to that body now the npa is saying that indications are that the father wasn't involved in that part but um he is said to have gone to the prison to try and retrieve tabo besta who was not actually tabo besta and that's why he's linked to aiding and abetting the escape um in this case very interesting uh, dr nadine Pa was also reluctant to show her face uh, but of course she was forced to be visible in court you know let, let's talk about what happened there Initially, yes, when she walked into the court, um, she was we uh, wearing a jacket, a hoodie, um, and she covered her face and kind of buttoned it up very tightly. And then she also uh, put on a face mask. So the only part of her face that was really visible was her eyes. But the magistrate said that the court needed to verify that the person in custody is the right person and then asked her to actually reveal um, her face, which obviously gave the, the cameras an opportunity to film her uh, properly for the first time since her actual arrest. Wow. Uh, let's also talk about what charges she might be facing. We know that uh, she was some form of a celebrity in South Africa. So it's, it's a twofold question. What charges is she facing? How do people of South Africa feel about her in the moment? Well, Dr. Namdipa was one of those, you know, high flying, what they what they tend to refer to as a celebrity doctor. Um, and she would do cosmetic treatments for a lot of local celebrities. So she was quite well known. She had a very active Instagram account where she would also post some of the treatments that she would be doing with local celebrities um, that she was doing mainly cosmetic treatments on. Um, she was she was quite active, you know, posting also pictures pictures of herself on um I think there was a there's a post that I saw about her flying on a private jet and people were wondering whether this was a pay how this was paid for and whether it was paid for with the proceeds of her medical career or whether there was other activities that she was involved in in terms of her own um, charges because she has been linked to those dead bodies the police have charged her with murder and the police indicate that um 
not only is she charged with murder, but also charged with um, basically tampering with 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 uh, bodies which were taken from a state mortuary. There was more than one body that was actually taken from the state mortuary during the course of this. At least three that we were aware of. One that was ultimately taken to the prison, but there were two others that were that were, were that were taken and that were buried. And police later found that 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 in the body bags it wasn't actually um, you know human remains but actually it was other remains like of of um, food products that were put inside that so there's still a question as to what happened to those two other um, bodies that were removed from the state mortuary. Of course, Dr. Namdepa, being a doctor, she does uh, did allow her more access to be able to to get bodies. Um, you know, unlike an ordinary citizen. So she also used those medical connections to be able to to do that. And of course, the act of fraud for 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 saying that she was um, you know the person responsible for Tabo, for retrieving Tabo Besta. She told the court that she was his common law wife which hasn't actually been proven in any way. So those are amongst the charges that she is is facing. I'd also like to quickly follow up on that. You, you've mentioned a number of things as regards uh, Dr. Nandipa's access to these bodies based on her medical uh, background. Has the Medical Association in South Africa come out to say anything about this? And does this in any way negatively... You know, I'm sure it does... In so, I, I mean, I really don't know, but does it negatively impact how the body is perceived? Have they said anything and does this impact how they're perceived? Well, I think it does impact how um, they are perceived and and certainly the medical um, uh, body the, the, that registers doctors would likely have to take action against Dr. Nandipa um, during the course of this criminal proceedings or even after the criminal proceedings. If she is convicted of these charges, they would have to remove her completely from the doctor's role. Um, at the moment, she is behind bars, so there isn't any danger of her... Um, practicing medicine at this point because she is behind bars but it is definitely something that the medical association association the health professionals council in south africa would have to look into and remove her from the role of practicing doctors because she really would have um, you know brought the medical profession into disrepute as a result of these actions yeah all right i i, I don't remember that we've had anything you know this fascinating in the uh, South African court since uh, Oscar Pistorius, you know, in 20, I think 2014, 2015. Um, and so it's, it's really, really interesting to see, you know, these things play out here. But let's talk about the relationship between Thabo Besta and uh, Dr. Nadimpa. You know, as they, of course, remain in custody, is there any new revelations about their relationship, how they met, and, you know, what, you know, maybe had, had pulled them together or pulled them together um, over time? Well, over the weekend, actually, there have been some interesting revelations about how they actually conducted their relationship um one of the things that that has emerged is some uh, party goers who attended a party of dr namdipa said that they had actually seen her at the party in the in the presence of Tabo Besta and there's also an allegation that he has been uh, violent towards her there's an allegation that also um, he was verbally abusive towards her a voice note has emerged that that alleges to be him berating her um, on the voice note that has been circulating on social media of course it's not clear whether the voice note is 100% legitimate but if it is Tabo Besta it does speak to a very strange relationship that they had. Um, as I as I mentioned, there are some party goers who attended a function of hers who say that they saw him in attendance there and they saw him being abusive towards her. So it has raised a lot of speculation about the nature of her relationship with him as to whether he was also threatening her to stay in the relationship or whether she was a 100 percent willing participant what's also emerged is that while tabo besta was um staying at the manga wung, wung facility um but two sunday newspapers the sunday independent and the sunday times have both reported that he has he was let out of prison several times to actually go and stay at 
five-star hotels, very upmarket hotels. The one paper, the Sunday Times, reported that that was a free state-based um, hotel, and another one reported that the hotel was actually based in Belito, which is quite a distance from the free state. And they are quoting, obviously, various sources. The The Sunday Times actually had uh, proof of a, a, a invoice from the... Uh, you know the facility that he was staying at the hotel that he was staying at um saying that he would be checked out on some weekends and actually go and stay at this hotel and some news organizations have also managed to speak to uh uh, members of the facility uh, prisoners who are at the mangaung's facility and they have obviously spoken on anonymity on the basis of anonymity without showing their identities but they are saying that Tabo Besta lived a very comfortable life while he was in prison he had food brought into him takeaways like pizza he was really not living the kind of life that any ordinary prisoner would live um and you know we know that on the mo at the moment there's an ongoing parliamentary investigation i'm sure they will also look into some of these new allegations that have come up about him being checked out of the prison as if it's a hotel. Oh, a lot of people, need, so many people need to be answering questions here. Um, I'm, I'm not even sure, you know, how long this would take, but there's so many questions that need to be asked. And um, the South African uh, prison system also needs, you know, to really, really be questioned here. Even if he, dis, even if, you know, Tabo Besta has given another, you know, uh, sentence, how we show is not going to end up in hotels again. You know, it's just, it's, there's too many of these things that need to be talked about. Um, Olive. Right. Uh, I mean, I, I want to believe that, uh, I, I don't know what the expected outcome is, you know, on a final note, what the expected outcome is for the people of South Africa as regards this case. I know that Tabo Besta had already been trialed, tried and charged before he escaped, so he might have to go and continue with his sentencing. But what really is a general sense we can get from people's expectations? Well, for, in terms of Tabo Besta, the expectation is that he remain behind bars. Remember, he's a convicted rapist and murderer, so quite a dangerous person to be have to have been out on the streets for you know this length of time, almost a full year, living freely as if he hasn't committed these crimes. When it comes to um, the other people who are involved, there's definitely an expectation from South Africans that there be consequences. So, for example, the prison that Tabo Besta was held in is a private facility that the government has has been paying G4S security company um, over several years and not a small amount of money. They're paying them billions to actually manage this facility. And a lot of South Africans are calling for there to be consequences against G4S for either their contract to be reviewed or at least for high level heads to roll because people are saying that there's no way that Tabo Besta could have escaped if only two um, people at the facility who have now been arrested, the camera technician and one of the, the you know, former senior staff members, right. that only those two people knew, you know. There's also calls for the uh, Minister of Justice and the Deputy Minister of Justice to account because it seems like they were made aware earlier on, but they didn't tell anyone. They didn't inform members of the public. So there are questions as to why they sat on the information and allowed uh, this dangerous criminal to roam free and not alerting South Africans to at least be on the lookout. So those are amongst the consequences that South Africans are hoping for uh, G4S to be taken account and also some accountability within the Department of uh, Justice and Correctional Services. Absolutely. I mean, Becky said that the Minister of Police has promised that there will be more arrests. And as these come, we'd love to have you back again. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you.